What's up guys, Andrew here on my channel Gear Inc. where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you and on my channel that's PC Tech, Games, and Gear. Today I'm talking about mistakes. Mistakes I've made and hopefully how, you know, mistakes that I've made that I'm going to share with you so you don't make the same mistakes when you're picking out parts for your computer. A lot of this might seem like common sense, but at the time that I built my first computer, guys, it wasn't. There was not nearly as many, uh, you know, guides and things like YouTube around when I built the first system I had. So we're going to start this video with a story. When I was a kid, the first computer I ever had was given to me by my best friend, and it was the Manila. You remember the Manila computers? Everything was Manila, even the peripherals and the monitor and all that. Then Apple came out with like not the Manila, and it was amazing, even though I don't like Apple. And then basically, I had built a couple of junkyard computers with my buddy. Uh, he moved away, and I bought brand new parts that I wanted to build myself. So the first mistake I made is the motherboard did not match the socket. So for you guys who know what I'm talking about, I bought a server motherboard, and I tried to put a consumer CPU in that motherboard. That doesn't work because for obvious reasons, but essentially I had like half an inch of clearance around the CPU. It's a miracle I didn't break it, but when I figured out my mistake, I returned it. Now the second mistake I made when I was building my first computer is that I did not use standoffs for the motherboard. So what that means guys is there's no insulator between the motherboard and the case so it acted like one giant conductor. When I flipped that sucker on, my motherboard lit up caught on fire, I freaked out, and then I wrote a scathing review to Biostar telling them why their motherboard was garbage. They ended up comping me even though it was my fault that I found out later because I made a dumb mistake, but it happened. And then the well, another big mistake I made, I bought my first AIO and I had perforated the radiator without knowing about it. And so basically when I had turned it on, the pump turned on, everything seemed fine. But then all of that pressure hit that hole and sprayed me in the face. I got it in my eyes. I got it all over the system. I fried a bunch of components. So guys, mistakes happen. Whatever you've done that was dumb, I've done it much dumber, I'm sure. So when you're buying components, let's talk about just some things that you want to just kind of you know, rules to live by are, are just kind of things you want to know. So when you're buying a case, the two most important things are this, airflow and whether or not it supports your motherboard. That should seem obvious, but I've made that mistake before. So just if you're buying a motherboard, just understand that not all cases fit all motherboards and whatever you're putting in it, you need enough room. Airflow is the, also the most important thing when picking a, a case outside of everything else because it's going to directly affect how hot your components are running and that to me anyway that's more important than aesthetics it's more important than brand i just care about the functionality there now in terms of motherboard obviously just make sure it fits the cpu it's not necessarily that simple because if you want features like overclocking not all the not all motherboards on either amd and intel support overclocking if there's extra pcie lanes if you want extra features it's really you have to do your own research but um, it doesn't always mean, even if you buy the right motherboard, like technically it's the right socket fit, if it's generations old, sometimes it will not support the newer CPUs, and so that's something you have to look into when you're making that purchase. When you're buying a graphics card, guys, if you could even find one right now, the number one thing you want to just know is that it really is your personal preference. All of them, for the most part, will perform within very similar ranges within the same cards. So a GTX 1080 Ti from ASUS will perform pretty much the same as one from EVGA. It just comes down to personal, uh, personal preference or software that comes with those graphics cards that maybe you prefer one or the other. When you're buying a power source, which obviously those are a little inflated right now, you just want to make sure that you're getting something that's enough wattage for your system or whatever you're trying to do and that it's good quality. I've actually linked two lists down below that I personally use when I'm picking out power sources um, and these have been updated uh, fairly regularly and so it gives you a good idea of kind of the tier of power source. But here's my rule. Bronze, no matter what, basically for just a regular system, if you're doing any heavy overclocking, gold is my minimum requirement personally for me and don't go overboard with the wattage guys really a hundred above what your max load is should do you just fine now in terms of everything else like peripherals hard drives things like that um, just know that hard drives and ram right now are currently um, overpriced and so be careful when you're purchasing that and really you only need eight gigabytes of ram right now for most gamers um, as there are some games that are taking advantage of more than that just make sure that you leave yourself room to expand so that you can add extra ram later on for hard drives, guys, the kind of the holy duo of having a smaller solid state drive and a bigger uh, regular mechanical hard drive is still kind of my recommended method for those who are on a budget. Um, just make sure that you're uh, loading the operating system onto the SSD and any of your most played games and then use the bigger one for everything else. And then in terms of your monitor, guys, I will say this. Upgrading my monitor was the biggest 
increase in my gaming experience more than anything I'd ever done before then. And so if you have a good GPU, I'd rather have a cardboard case than a crappy monitor. It's something that people I don't think spend enough money in when you're talking about trying to get the most out of your gaming experience. So guys, hopefully from my mistakes and these quick tips, when you're building your computer, you'll have a better idea of what to look out for. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me directly in the comments below. If you like this video, leave me a big thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and leave me a thumbs down. For all the PC community, if you have your own tips, if you have your own stories on how you messed up, share it with us. Obviously, I'd love to hear from you guys if there's anyone who has uh, you know any better um, advice than I do, obviously, when it comes to making a computer. Um, outside of that, guys, feel free to use my affiliate link down below to directly support me if you are buying computer components through Amazon. Um, that, and that's gonna help my channel grow. And I am doing another giveaway, guys, for hitting 2,500. As of this video, I'm like at 3,100 <laughs> subscribers. So it's pretty insane. But something else is gonna be coming out. I know I have the GPU giveaway going on down and that'll be in the link down below as well. But I am gonna be doing something else because I promised that I would. So if you have any uh, questions or if you ever you know, need any help, feel free to just leave me a comment and I'll help you as much as I can. We hope to see you next time here on Gear Dink.